Sweet, a pooping antelope. Come on, come on, come on. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Mara, good morning. Is it a beautiful day? Yeah, thank you for the hug. Look, the sun is almost up. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Got your cafe? Yep. Oh. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Slept really well last night. Probably the best yet of this tour because we finished pretty darn late <laughs> and our bodies were tired. <sighs> but you always feel refreshed, even though it's early. And this one is ready to go. Is that your stick? Is it? Is this the one you want? You ready? Look at those eyes. Here comes the sun. Right up over the horizon. That's one of the benefits of camping in the flats. So you get the sun early. Some people do sunrise yoga. I do sunrise shaving. Cheers, cheers. Boom. So good. Nutella peanut butter all day long. Mm. No crashies, no flatties, no whammies. Going down that road. We have made it to the metropolis of Wamsutter, Wyoming. It's a small highway town. This is pretty much the only place for resupply. Loves. And today I'm treating myself to some Pop-Tarts, the s'mores edition. I haven't had these since I was a kid. And even then I only got Pop-Tarts maybe once a year. My mom was one of those moms where we didn't get sugar cereal. So I'm treating myself to a little Pop-Tart. It is warm today and I'm glad to be here. We also filled up all of our water bottles and ate a little burrito. And even though it's a funky highway town, I'm very grateful and happy that it is here. Goodbye, Wam Sutter and I-80. We're heading toward the Colorado border now, which is pretty cool because if you didn't know, I'm from Colorado. I'm going home, baby. <laughs> We weren't sure. Were you sure? No, I, I wasn't quite sure where you were from. Yeah, there's no but Colorado pride here. No, no Boulder pride. <laughs> you. you know what I'm looking forward to? The Rocky Mountains of Colorado. I know it's gonna be hard, of course, but these flat, barren, hot oil fields that we've been riding through for the last 30 miles and the rest of today are just not that inspiring. And uh, I'm more of a fan of mountains is what I'm saying. Even though this pedaling is easy, I like going up and down. Hello, 50 miles later. The landscape is a little bit more exciting, look. Yep, we're in the mountains again. John and Mira are way up ahead. Kevin is back a ways. I'm kind of hanging back waiting for him. He says his sit bones are excruciating and I'm guessing his butt just isn't used to sitting in a saddle this long. And that's what happens. So I'm just kind of hanging back, waiting for him. And I kind of like being in the middle here alone with my thoughts again. I do my best thinking when I'm on my bike by myself and I love the company for sure. I'm having a great time jibber jabbering all day with my friends, but I also like the solitude that solo riding brings. I don't quite know where we'll end up today. We're near a town called Savory. I think it's a teeny teeny town. There's no services. They might have water. They better have water. And there's also some sort of a ranch nearby, the Ladder Ranch, which is off route, but it might be good to get a shower and a bed. Que 
Kevin, what'd you just say? I can't believe how much it hurts. <laughs> Nothing is going my way today. I feel like everything's just falling apart. My legs feel like they're somewhat there, but we've done a lot of climbing in the last couple miles. I can't sit on my seat without feeling comfortable. It's over 100 degrees. These little flies are eating us and there's no water. So this is my last bottle of water and it's it feels like the water's 100 degrees. So today's just not the best day. I just feel drained. I just feel empty. Like I got nothing else. We have nine more miles till town and we have to make it. How you how you getting through it? How you pedaling forward? I don't have a choice, so I'm not giving myself a choice to quit. I mean, I've been taking breaks because I have to. Like right now, we just took a little break to drink some water before another big hill. But yeah, I don't have a choice, right? We have to make it. I have good news for you. The suffering always ends. It doesn't last forever. <laughs> It doesn't feel that way right now. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way. I know, man. I've been through it. You're doing great. It's the, all about your attitude and your smile. Look at that. See, you're smiling, kind of. <laughs> you're a champ, man. We'll get there. You got it, bud. Yes, sir. Si se puede. Tu eres la bestia. Vamos, 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 vamos. You got this, dude. You got this, my man. I swear it's the final hill. I love it. I can hear Kevin talking to himself. Come on, Kevin. Come on, come on, come on. You got it. <laughs> yep, I've been there. I'm not exactly in Colorado yet, but what I'm looking at is definitely Colorado and it feels so good to be home. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin is dead or he's in heaven. I don't know. Oh. Yes. Oh my goodness. Was that, that one was of the that. hardest physical days of your life? That was, it was just, it was a hundred degrees all day. hundred degrees, rough roads, all the climbing in the last bit and I couldn't sit comfortably on my bike. So 82 and a half miles without being able to sit comfortably on your bike is mentally undrained. So we just rolled into Savory a little later than we thought. The museum on our map says that they have some drinks. And I was like, oh, it's probably closed. There's nobody in the parking lot, but the doors open and it is self-serve. I have a cold seltzer, my friends, and there's nothing more I've wanted than this thing right here. Oh, these are good. They even have a freezer full of cents, Otter so. Pops and ice cream sandwiches and Klondike bars, and it's all a dollar. And over here, look at this. Please play, pay in a little flowered box. Yeah. Look at that, a whole cooler full of everything you could ever want. Thank you so much, Savory Museum. I've never seen anything like this. This is pretty incredible. They just leave this wide open for the public. What are you gonna get there, bud? I got a couple uh, twin pops, they're calling them, little freezies. Whew, man, what a day. <laughs> Every day is what a day. I keep saying that, but wow, this really was a day. Good work today, man. That was awesome. Nice. Cheers. <laughs> and I found their hose. Oh, teamwork. <laughs> there we go. That felt so good. It feels so good, it's so cold, but it feels so good. I did not ask permission if we could just take a shower with their hose, but they seem pretty giving in every other way, so maybe they're cool with it. <laughs> yeah, so here's the biker price list for everything. It's all reasonable. All sorts of goodies. We are now downstairs in the kitchen, and they have burritos, frozen burritos, and pie and all sorts of other goodies. This is really heaven. So I have plenty of food on my bike, but it's more fun to buy food from these people and support their museum. I have a bean burrito, an apple pie, 
some chips, trail mix, 7-Up. And I don't think I've had pudding since I was a kid. <laughs> John, what'd you, what'd you make? Not quite as elaborate as you. Uh, peach pie for dessert, well, an ice cream bar, and uh, a beef and bean burrito. Ooh. Cheers, my boys. So I met my buddy Johnsy, who was also a CU Buffalo. Yeah. What is up? Alumni in the house. This is a local history museum. This is the Little Snake River Museum. You've got a lot of local history in the area, um, from original trappers and traders to farmers and families that settled this entire valley and have been living here for, gosh, over 150 years wow. now. Some of these families have been here the whole time. It's pretty cool. We're just yeah. finishing up this sheep herding exhibit here that should be open on the 15th of August. And yeah, so this a is huge, a big sheep area, huh? Yeah, so this entire area was a big like cattle ranch and sheep ranch area, and there was a big conflict with that through the whole 1900s. There's a lot of violence and <laughs> debauchery between the different clans. Really? And uh, right now it seems as if the cattle ranchers have won out there's very few sheep herding families in the in the area anymore the wow. sheep industry in all of the u.s has pretty much declined it's all new zealand and australia these days so. yeah and so these buildings these old houses where are they so yeah this is the original uh farm settlers in the valley um the stonewall house that was about two miles down the road they were the first settlers here um they they're wagon broke down in Rollins and they were down in their last couple bucks and one of the trappers from this area was up there and he told them it was, it was nearing winter and they were on their way to Oregon and they uh, he told them to come down here and check it out spend the winter here make sure they didn't end up in because uh, west of here is the red desert and it's a rough place to get caught in the winter mm. it's about 80 mile an hour winds 30 below yeah it's a tough spot so they came down here and found this beautiful ass valley <laughs> it is a beautiful and ass they were valley. like why are we going to go all the way to oregon so that was the first families and that pretty much set up this area for what it became but honestly this is one of the few places i have left that i visit year in year out and very little changes and it's a nice feeling to come back and see things are still relatively the same there's some good upgrades my mom is the director here she's done a lot of cool stuff with this museum getting yeah. involved with the community getting like events and stuff going for people and it, and you were stuff. born and raised here yeah so i was born by default in colorado which i'm thankful for i'd <laughs> love to be a colorado man but that's the closest hospital about 56 miles south and uh grew up on my parents were sheep ranchers uh, when I was a kid up the valley, so I grew up on a small sheep ranch raising sheep, shearing sheep. This is still, I think, the elk capital of the world. Um, mm. So there's huge herds of elk, elk that come down from the Medicine Bow National oh, Forest yeah. in the fall. Tons of pronghorn, deer. This whole valley was just a beaver heaven. It still oh. is for the most part, but yeah, it was a really kind of cornucopia of life around here. Savory Wyoming, Savory what's Wyoming. up? Wyoming, population 25, but that sign hasn't been changed in probably 32 years. So. <laughs> to wake up. I love waking up in the middle of nowhere in nature, <laughs> but this is, this is pretty darn cool <laughs> to wake up here. It's like I went back in time and woke up and, oh, there's my house. I'm a cowboy now. Did you dream of being in the Wild West? <laughs> no dreams at all, but feels like we're in one when we wake up, doesn't it? 
Good morning, Pronghorn. Good morning. Good morning, Mira. Goodbye, Savory, our savior. What a cool spot. I want to come back here someday. Okay, so we've decided to make a last minute audible, a change. Instead of firing off to Steamboat, another 65 miles uphill, we're gonna take a chill day. We heard good things about a place up here called Ladder Ranch. I guess they're very friendly to cyclists. And that's where we're headed. It's only 13 miles away. So today's essentially gonna be a rest day and I think that's gonna be good for everybody. Here we are, coming up on Ladder Ranch. Looks really nice. Look at that. They got a sign for the bikers even. CDT and BDR stop here. Well, we're gonna do that. Hi, buddy. You're pretty soft. You're a nice little soft ranch dog, aren't you? So what are we making for lunch here, Desiree? Today we're making vegetarian chili. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I heard there was a vegetarian, so. Um, and then there's rice in the rice cooker as well, and sandwiches. Cheers. It might be because I'm starving, but this is some of the best chili I've ever had, especially with the, with the Fritos in there. You all know that I love riding my bike, but right now it's 2.30 p.m. and I'm loving not riding my bike. This has been a wonderful rest. There's my tent right here, camped out next to the river, and way off in the distance is the actual ranch house. And Sharon, who uh, runs the place, said her family's been out here since the late 1800s and i think it's so cool that they have opened up their doors and their kitchens to cdt hikers and us on the gdmbr they have a sign right outside and i think that's just so cool and trusting of them they uh you know they bring in anybody off the street essentially and feed them and let them sleep in the cabins or let them camp for a small amount of money there's no way they're making money off us it's just a service and that's that's really cool and i'm starting to see a theme with some of the people along the route that they that they really embrace the travelers that come through here yes oh. tell me about your uh your real estate here my real estate what you got going on here Ooh, i have you mean the tent and stuff yeah this is epax duplex got it about three or so months ago and I really, really like it. It's an awesome tent. It's huge. It packs down really small. It's really light. It needs to be huge because how tall are you? <laughs> I'm six foot six. All right. Six Most tents don't six. fit, right? Nope. I've tried probably 20 or so tents and none of them fit. So this is the first one that fits and packs down. And John has the same brand tent, just a different color. I'd never heard of this, this brand Z-Pack, but I guess it's the tent to get. But it's pricey. I think it's like $600. John, how often do you take rest days when you're out riding your bike months on end? Uh, not very often. I mean, like a complete rest day. Like I'll take a shorter day or ride a section at a slower pace, usually. But if there's something, you know, if it's a really nice place to stop and see or just make sense in terms of supplies, then maybe one a month, maybe? What do you think about this Great Divide mountain bike route, GDMBR so far? Uh, it's surprising because the, the riding itself, like the route is not hard. It's in that there's a, you know, a, a lot of asphalt, uh, a lot of days are flat, the, the trails aren't that rough, and the people we've met, that part is really special. Now that's a glimpse of America that um, even Americans don't get to see get to go into these places and talk to these people and um, yeah that, that's really where the the magic of this route is I think that's been really fun are you excited for Colorado yeah dude I've never been to Colorado I mean we're just in the we're just inside now but that it feels, mountain is Colorado yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it feels it feels uh, it still feels like Wyoming right but uh, 
Yeah, I'm excited. There's lots of good things about Colorado. I hear there's this guy I know, and he just seems to really like it. Love Colorado. It went more, no, he's obsessed with Colorado. <laughs> so I think it's going to be good. I love my state. I do. I love all of the states I ever go through. There's always charm everywhere you go. But, of course, born and raised in the Rocky Mountains, and there's a lot of beauty there. There's a reason why people go to Colorado. So Yeah, yeah totally. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it should be good. Mira, are you excited for some dog ice cream? Can you believe this? Look how happy Mira is. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Mira? 